Hey everybody, this video is going to teach you how to prove triangles congruent. Now this is an introduction, although we will do a couple of short proofs at the end of this video. The purpose of this is to get you thinking in the right direction of how to prove triangles congruent. And the first thing we need to talk about are the five different ways to prove triangles congruent. The first one is side, side, side. If you have three sets of corresponding sides, in two different triangles, then those triangles are congruent by side, side, side. So here's an example where we just have two totally separate triangles. We have one tick marks, two tick marks, three tick marks, we're good to go. In the second example below it, we only have two sets, but that's because they share a side. Whenever two triangles share a side, you can just go right ahead and mark it. It's congruent to itself because if you were to split them up, that side would be in both triangles, okay? So whenever you have a shared side, just go ahead and put some marks on it so you know that they are congruent. The second option is side angle side. So if you have two sets of congruent sides and one congruent angle that happens to be in between the two sides, you would use side angle side, or SAS. This, you have to remember, vertical angles are always congruent. So anytime you see an hourglass or a bow tie problem, whenever you have vertical angles, make sure you mark those as well. The third option is angle side angle. So similar to the last one, except for this time you have two sets of congruent angles with a side in between. That would be angle side angle. Because we know that all three angles of a triangle will always add up to 180. Another way we can do this would be angle, angle, side. So if you have two congruent angles and a congruent side, no matter what, you are going to be able to prove these triangles congruent. You just have to check to see if the side is in between the two, like an angle, side, angle, or in this example where it is not in between the two congruent angles, then it would be angle, angle, side instead of angle, side, angle. And remember, Always make sure you mark your vertical angles. The last one is HL, which stands for hypotenuse leg. Because we know the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, we can do HL. That's only when you have a right triangle, though. So HL is only used for right triangles. Okay? So if you have right triangles with right angles, and then you have two sides. One of them must be the hypotenuse, and the other one must be a leg. If you have a congruent hypotenuse and congruent legs, then you can prove triangles congruent by HL. Of course, remember to mark shared sides as well. So now if you were to take away the right angle aspect of this, you would have an angle, a side, and a side. Now I know you're getting a little giggly like, wow, the teacher just wrote angle, side, side on the paper. If you have angle, side, side, or side, side, angle, that means the triangles are not congruent. And it's not because I don't want you writing that on a piece of paper. That's not the purpose. However, if you do write that on a paper, it's easy for you to remember that you would be wrong because triangles cannot be congruent by angle side side. Reason would be if you had an angle and then you have a side, so here's our angle, here's our side, the last piece would be a side. We don't know if the side is coming down this way and that would be our other side or if the side would come down this way and that would be your side. So it actually does not work. So it's not because we don't want you to write angle side side on a piece of paper or side side angle, which is bass backwards. You know, it honestly doesn't work. So you just don't use it. If you write it, you know you're wrong. So you erase it and say that they're not congruent. Okay? Couple of tips. Always make sure you mark your shared side or your vertical angles. So, again, the purpose of this video is to kind of get you thinking about how these are congruent, and then we're going to work with actually going through a proof. So, first thing we're going to do is figure out which postulate is being used. So remember, you should always, always, always mark vertical angles and shared sides. So the first thing I'm actually going to do for all six of these is go mark away. 
So here's a shared side, put some marks on it. Here's vertical angles, put some marks on them. Here's another shared side, mark. Vertical angles, marked. Shared side, marked. Shared side, marked. So now you can go look at the pattern. Now you have to look at both. This is an angle, this is an angle, this is a side. So this would be angle, angle, side. Right angles are allowed. They don't always have to be HL. Okay? If it's going to be right angles, you need to have a hypotenuse and a leg. So this had two angles, so this is angle, angle, side. Here's another one. This is an angle, this is a side, this is an angle. So those triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. This one, you do have a right angle, so this would be an angle, a side, and a side. Now you think for a second, whoa, 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 there's angle, side, side, it can't be, but since it's a right angle, this is actually a hypotenuse and a leg, so this is allowed. You can have angle, side, side with right angles, that would be called HL. Okay, so I did the first row for you. You pause the video and try the second row, and we'll see if you get them correct. So this guy right here, you had an angle, you had a side, and you had another angle. But over here, you had an angle, a side, and then you had another angle way over here. So this one would be angle, angle, side, and this one would be angle, side, angle, because in this one, the side's between the two marked angles, and this one, the side is not in between the two marked angles. So this does not follow the pattern, so this is not congruent. This one, you have an angle, you have a side, you have a side, and it just so happens that this is a right triangle again, so this would be HL again. And in this last one, you have a side, you have an angle, and you have another side. That same pattern exists on this side as well, so this one is side, angle, side. So if you got those right, that means you're good to go. And we're going to move on to some tips that we talked about in an earlier chapter. So one of the things about proving triangles congruent is you kind of have to think about what you know based on what's given. So what do we know for this first one? So we have a line A, B, and C all on the same line. So we have a segment AC with B somewhere in the middle. But then we are told specifically that B is the midpoint of AC. So what do we know? We know that AB is congruent to BC because midpoints cut segments in half. That's what we know based on the given information. In the second one, we know that AB is perpendicular to CD, so that means you're going to have two right angles. So you're going to have angle ABC, which is congruent to angle ABD, and the reason why is because perpendicular segments can or form congruent right angles. What do we know in the next one? The only thing we know in the next one is angle ACB is congruent to angle DCE. And the reason we know that is because of vertical angles. We never have to tell you that you have vertical angles. Anytime you see it, you are allowed to use it. Same with the last one. The last one is, you don't know that C is the midpoint. You don't know anything about AC bisecting the measure of angle BAD. The only thing you know is that AC is actually congruent to AC. And the reason why is because we just talked about that up above, it's a shared side. If you were to split that diagram into two separate pictures, you would have ABC and you would have ADC and AC would be in both of them. So whenever you have a shared side, you are allowed to say that AC is congruent to itself because it is technically in two other triangles. All right? That's that. So let's start playing. Now, you, when you talk to different teachers, you're going to have different styles of proofs. Well, I teach a pretty straightforward two-column proof where first thing you do is list the statements. Now, the way I do it, your statement is never finished until you use something congruent. Now, this right here is probably the easiest type of triangle proof you could ever see. 
You're just given the three things and you write it and you're done. There's no thinking involved except for picking out which method you just used. So the first thing you do is you have your given. So the first thing you do is list your first given. AB is congruent to XY. And what's your reason for knowing that? Well, the reason is because your teacher told you so. That's because it's a given. That is known as a given statement. This is what you must do, though. You must mark your picture. So AB is congruent to XY. So now you move on to your next given. Here's your second given. So we know that BC is congruent to YZ. What's your reason for that? Again, it's because I told you so. That's your given. After you write it down, you must go mark it. BC is congruent to YZ. And then, obviously, you're done with that, guys. So you move on to the last one. This one says that angle B is congruent to angle Y. And your reason, again, is because it is given to you. So you go mark angle B congruent to angle Y. As soon as you have three congruent statements, congruent, 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 you start looking at your triangle and see if you can prove these triangles congruent. And you can. So your last step is your prove step. So we are going to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. And the reason they are congruent are because it follows the side angle side pattern side angle side side angle side and that's how you do it that's a proof for you so we have one more proof in this video just one so this one is a little bit different this is going to have more steps because some information was not given so what I would like you to do is pause this video and just see if you can think for yourself of what you know is going to be congruent and then we'll see if we can put the pieces together and form a nice step-by-step -step proof. So go ahead and pause it and just see if you can think about what you're going to have. So hopefully you came up with a few thoughts on your own. And now let's step through it and officially prove this. So, first thing you do is write down your first given. So we know that MT is perpendicular to AH. We know that because it was given to us. But we're not done with this first statement yet. And it's because we never proved anything congruent. So now you need to think about MT being perpendicular to AH. What do you know because of that? So, MT intersects AH at point T, and perpendicular makes right angles. So, we can say that angle MTA is congruent to angle MTH. But now you have to give a little bit of a more detailed reason. So, your reason would be something along the lines of perpendicular lines form congruent right angles. Okay, now that's kind of an abbreviation here. And that's because we know that perpendicular just makes right angles. But we also know right angles are all going to be congruent because they're all 90 degrees. So we kind of combine two different thoughts into one statement here. Okay? But now that we have a congruence step, we're done with the first given. Our picture is marked, and now we can move on to the next. So after you're done with that first given, you work your way to the second given. So step three is going to be T is the midpoint of AH. And again, our reason is because my teacher gave it to me. That's just a given statement. But again, we do not have anything congruent, so we are not done with this given yet. So, what do you know because T is the midpoint of AH? 
Well, you have to remember, midpoints cut segments in half, and if that segment AH got cut in half, that means AT is going to be congruent to TH. So if you were thinking that AT was congruent to, I'm sorry, TH, then you know that you've got two pieces already. We just have one more to find. Now, what is our reason? And our reason is midpoints cut segments in half. Okay, that's what a midpoint does. It cuts a segment in half into two congruent segments. Now, I'm not going to make you write a whole bunch of like sentences for each one of these thoughts, but I better be able to understand what you're talking about. Okay, so midpoints cut segments in half. So now we're done with the second given. So now we're out of givens and we only have two congruent statements. So you're not done. We have more. But then you remember what I said earlier. Shared sides are always congruent to themselves. So step five, this part is what I call picture proofs. So you look at the picture and you just say, what can you prove from the picture? And you would say that MT is congruent to MT. And then the reason would just be shared side, or this is actually just known as the reflexive property. Okay, so you can just call it the reflexive property. Mark your picture. Now you have enough information. So once you have three pieces of congruent information, Okay, you have an angle, you have a set of sides, and you have another set of sides. So, step five, or step six, would be to prove triangle MAT congruent to triangle MHT. And the reason would be, go look at your diagram, think about it for a second. If you said side, angle, side, you would be correct. Okay, and that's it. Those are two proofs, so you've just accomplished proofs. Uh, that's it for this video. Again, the purpose of it was to introduce you to proofs. We will be doing more with them. They will get a little bit longer. Some will get a little bit shorter. We're going to have different types of diagrams, but those are pretty much the basics. All right? So this is Longo, and I'm out. See you. Bye.